In my 15 years of FPS experience, I decided to train my reaction time, and it went from average to faster than an F1 driver in less than a month. And I'm going to teach you guys how I did it and everything I learned. Now, welcome to Shoddy's Yap Session, Episode 6, also known as The Greatest Background Noise. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. My name's Michael, also known as Shoddy. This is the series where I yap about stuff and teach you guys everything I know. Obviously, it's pretty self-explanatory that reaction time is how long it takes you to react to something. But what most people don't know is we have reaction times that are different based on what we're reacting to. Now, what that means is if I hear a noise, for example, I might react faster depending on how fast my reaction time is for that specific thing compared to seeing something. There's visual reaction time and then there's auditory reaction time. And some people, they think that, oh, I'm so fast, my reaction time's so fast, and then they get in a match and you throw. You know what I mean? It's like you don't react. Someone will TP behind you like you're playing Valor and you see a Yoru or so many other things and you can't react. Because you hear it, but you haven't trained your auditory reaction time, so you can't react to it as quickly as you could by just seeing something. Now, fortunately, the most important reaction time is your visual reaction time for video games. So I trained that up first. And I ended around, I think the highest I've ever gotten is 120 milliseconds, which for me is crazy. There was one uh, application that I'll tell you guys about later that I got a 100 millisecond reaction time on, and that was insane. I think that was the best I've ever gotten. It was really cool. But before that, before I even trained it at all, it was all reaction times of 250, 230. I think the best I could ever get back in the day was 220. And I was happy about 200 or 220 because that area was like, yes, I'm getting better. I'm so good. But I looked at the pros. I think that was actually, that's what caused me to start training my reaction time. It was a Linus Tech Tips or something like that YouTube video out on, uh, well, on YouTube, obviously. But he was interviewing pros asking basically if reaction time mattered. And he had Shroud set up and he did like a 1v1 or something. And I saw that Shroud's reaction time was like 150 milliseconds. And it's in line with a lot of professional players. And then I realized it was like, I can't compete. There's no way I can even think to compete with these people. So I had to decide, okay, I suck. I got to get better. I got to figure out how to get better. So I looked everywhere. I followed every YouTube video. I listened to everyone, what their advice was. And it all kind of sucked. Like their advice was, oh, well, uh, just play video games or do this or do that. And then I decided, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to keep reacting to stuff over and over and over again until I got better reaction time. Now, this is what I call my brute force method. And for the brute force method, all I really did was I would choose days out of the week. I would choose maybe two to three days and rest in between each of them. And then I would have one of those online reaction time tests. You guys all know the ones like human benchmark and things like that. And I would play it for like 100, 200 repetitions because it was like, to me, it was common sense. I want to react faster. Let me react to a lot of stuff. So I would keep playing. I'd keep playing. And I basically built a program around doing 100 every single day or every other day. But now that you guys hear that, before you just click off, oh, well, now I know how to train it. Oh, this guy's just going to teach me how to do this. It, that's not all. I actually learned from training my reaction time two ways that were actually more important than doing this and way better. Because I learned that reaction time actually didn't matter. People always tell you, oh, well, your reaction time is important or it's genetic or it's this or it's that. There's plenty of other things people say. And I learned that one, your reaction time, it's inconsequential if you don't train this one thing. And then two, there's so many better ways to train it for actual in-game practice than what I did. So I'm going to share both of those with you guys in a little while. But before I do, I want to clear up a few things. People always say reaction time is genetic, which it might be. Some of it might be, but I know you can train it. How do I know? I did it and I keep getting better. Even when I aim train nowadays, my reaction time keeps getting faster. It keeps getting better depending on what day I play, how much sleep I got, things like that. And speaking of how much sleep I got, that's the second thing. People talk about what impacts your reaction time. Most people only think about, oh, well, if you're old, your reaction time is bad. But actually, there have been plenty of studies that are backing it and saying that the reaction time change from a 20 year old to a 60 year old is only about 40 milliseconds, which is, in my opinion, inconsequential compared to how much you could really improve. Like me alone, I improved over 100 milliseconds and I'm 22. So that means by the time I'm 60, if I keep it up, if I maintain my own health, I'll still have a reaction time of 180 milliseconds, which is still better than most people. And that's assuming I don't improve at all. That's assuming 
I peak out at 120 milliseconds, which it's very possible. We don't, I don't really know the ceiling for reaction time. I thought my ceiling was 150, but then it just kept getting better. I've, <laughs> I keep seeing improvement every day nowadays. But what does matter for reaction time is sleep and water consumption. It's pretty common knowledge that the amount of water you intake is dependent on most things in your health. And it's also pretty common knowledge that sleep is super important. So both of those still apply for reaction time. Now, if you don't want to do the brute force method, which with 100 repetitions, you could do what I do now. And this is my current method of training that brought me from 150 milliseconds down to 120, which is I play reactivity maps in Kovacs or AIM Labs. Now, you might ask, what's a reactivity map? Or what's AIM Labs and Kovacs? There are these online AIM trainers. One of them is free and one of them is paid. AIM Labs is completely free. And you don't need to play anything other than aim labs. The reason why is you don't need much out of it. All you really need is to face a map where you have a target that's moving very quickly. What I usually do is one target that's moving on the ground left and right very quickly. And I do another target that's moving in the air very quickly. I'll link down below a few maps for that. But in general, if you practice reactivity maps, you'll also... You'll increase your hand-eye coordination for aiming, so you'll be able to translate your reaction time into aim. But you'll also learn how to become faster at reacting, and you'll train yourself to react to different stimulus. And speaking of different stimulus, there are also maps on aim labs where it teaches you how to react to sounds instead of just seeing something. I'm going to link every single map in the description. I'm also going to link the websites that I use to train my reaction time. But then I realized my reaction time didn't even matter because I would have such a fast reaction time, but I would go into a match and it was like, I didn't even know how to use it. I didn't, it didn't do anything for me. And that's when I learned about reflexes. There's a lot of debate on reaction time versus reflexes and people say, eh, they're the same thing, but they're not. And what I mean by that is your reaction time is how fast you react to something. Your reflexes is what you do when you react. Now to explain it to you guys, I'm going to tell you guys two quick stories. The first story is of my dad. Now, my dad was driving me to school one day, and when he was taking me to school, he looked over at me to tell me something. I can't remember what he said, but when he looked over, some guy tried cutting him off at the exact same time. And without even looking, without anything, my dad was able to slam on the brakes instantly. And I thought, wow, he must, he must be cracked. He must have a super reaction time. But the funny thing is, he's only slightly above average. And it got me thinking. I was like, so why did he react so quickly? How did he do that? How did his foot get to the brake so quickly? And then I had another story. Now, my friend might watch this, so he might kill me. But one of my friends, now I'm a pretty good driver, and I yelled at my friend for this because I thought it was stupid. But I realized now it was reflexes. He was driving, and someone came into his lane, tried coming, cutting him off. And when they tried cutting him off, instead of hitting the brakes, he swerved trying to avoid the person. And he swerved into a ditch. Now, it might a lot of people say, well, wow, he must be stupid and blah, blah, blah. But it's a matter of training. It's a matter of what you train yourself to do when something happens. And what I mean by that is my dad always taught me two things. Whenever I'm driving down and I'm in New York, so, you know, in New York, it's crazy with the stop signs. So whenever I'm driving past certain intersections or different places, my first reaction is be near the brake and near the horn. So before someone even thinks to do something, I'm already reacting to what they're doing, hitting the horn and the brake at the same time. So one, I alert them with the horn and two, I'm stopping in case they're too stupid to stop because in the road, you can't assume you can't just think uh, this guy won't do that. He's not stupid because it's always better to assume everyone is stupid except for you when you're driving because there are crazy people on the road. There will be people that do dumb things on the road. So it's always better to just assume you're the only person that can control it. You're the only person that can control anything. Now, what's the point of those stories? Well, the point of the stories are even professional players, like there's plenty of professional players that have a reaction time slower than me. I've, I think uh, Simple, Simple has a reaction time of like 180 milliseconds. And if you know who Simple is, he's the GOAT. He was cracked back in the day. He was hitting insane shots, but his reaction time isn't that fast. But you watch him in a match, and someone will pop up on his screen and in the same pixel they're dead and it's his reflexes he trained his reflexes to say okay if i see this person my brain already knows line it up here and hit them but some people their reflexes aren't trained so they might make a squiggly line towards them or they might overshoot or they might just not know how to react and shut down 
but I'm gonna teach you guys a few maps that I use on Kovax and Aim Labs that completely transform my reflexes. Now, one of them, and in general, I've noticed how well I perform in regular maps on Kovax compared to reflex maps is night and day. Like for one of my reflex maps, I'm like, I think I'm top 0.1%, top like 500 out of 300,000 players. I can't remember, but a lot of reflexes maps, and you might ask, what's a reflex map? Reflex maps are where you only have one target. Now, the reason why that helps and that trains your reflexes is you have to use your reaction time to see when the target pops up. You have to use your reflexes to properly react to them by shooting them or tracking them or whatever and adjusting to them. And you have to do that over and over. And there's no guarantee where the next target will be. There's no guarantee of anything. You have to react and move. And it trains you to build good habits. It trains you to react properly. It's like when we're kids, how do we know when we touch the stove in that same second, how do we know to instantly pull our hands off the stove? It's a reflex. It's survival. It's just the way we're built, you know? And that's also why boxers do the same drill 800 times, because you want to be able to do something without thinking. You want to be able to just react. Like, for example, you know you have a fight coming up, and you know this guy always does a lead right hook. If he always does a lead right hook and you practice against that before he even thinks to do the hook, you're already reacting and you knock him out. And that's reflexes. You see that certain twitch in his muscles. And before you even think, before you even know what he's doing, you hit him because you practice those drills. You set up those drills so you knew what was going to happen. And that's also why professional players, it's such a night and day difference between casual players because they have thousands of hours. So every outcome, everything is already thought of. And that's why in CSGO, you've seen people get pre-fired through walls, like common spots. And it's because someone's had so many hours on a game and so much experience or in anything. And they know what you're doing before you do it because they've seen so many people do it. And they have such a large sample size of people doing it. Now that you guys know everything about reaction time, if you guys want to learn all the science behind perfect focus and better aim training, check out this video right over here and have a good one, everyone. God bless you.